Hey, what's up? This is Scott with the Level Up Tuts, and we're going to continue to talk about the SAS file structure and sort of how you're supposed to make sense of all of these different folders. If this isn't something you've seen before, this can be pretty darn intimidating, right? So in the last video, we talked about what exactly these import statements are doing and how we have this variables folder to actually have our variables. So now let's talk about this abstractions folder because it's next on the list here. So now why would you want your variables first then your abstractions? So your variables are going to be variables that are used throughout your code. Abstractions are also going to be things used throughout your code. Um, however, they're going to be more likely that they're going to be using your variables. Um, in fact, that's uh, likely that your variables are not going to be using abstractions because that wouldn't make any sense, but your abstractions are going to be using variables. And what are abstractions? And what's the sort of deal with this stuff? Well, this is where your mix-ins and that sort of stuff are going to go. Basically, the things that are reusable, these reusable chunks of code, but they're not your styles. So, Let's say, for example, uh, we have nothing in our abstractions, but let's say we wanted to have uh, text-based mixins. We would create a new file here, and we could call this underscore uh, typography and dot um, scss. Keep in mind, I'm starting this with an underscore because we want it to. Uh, we want it to be imported into our styles document, even though none of this stuff's going to be uh, printed out exactly. They're mixins. Uh, if you don't know what a SAS mixin is, watch our, our quick video on what SAS mixins are for Level Up Tuts. Explains it really well. Basically, it's a chunk of code. It's a function that you can run that outputs something. I actually took this mixin directly from the typography.scss file in the ohm theme. And basically, it's a uh, using rems with a fallback for pixel sizing. So this is a typography themed mixin, right? So this font size uh, you would call in your CSS um, by saying uh, my font size is gonna be this and then my font size divided by my base font size, which is what you're going to set somewhere in your variables, uh, let's say in typography, let's check this out uh, right here. So let's actually set our base font size right now. If we set our base, uh, sorry, let me paste this in here. Our base font size is gonna be 16 pixels. Let's save this. Now in our typography, this is going to get filled in to 16 pixels. And this way it's going to calculate our rims for us. So how is this used in action? Well, in your styles.css, we could say this link is going to be at include font size font hyphen size and then inside of here we're going to say it's 12 pixels every single anchor on this site is going to be 12 pixels right now and if we come to our css we can see what is actually compiled you can see that we have 12 pixels as our font size uh, as a fallback, but then we also have this calculated uh, 0.75 rem size, and that's with a base font size of 16 pixels. So if you come to this, or not this one, if you come to our abstractions typography, it's exactly what it, we're telling it to do with this mix-in. So this allows you, uh, abstractions is a place where you can put things like your mix-ins, but even further than that, break them up into themed files, right? So typography based or maybe buttons or something like that. Or if you don't need that level of um, separation in your code, I mean, you really could just say uh, new file, save underscore mixins.scss and store all of your mixins directly into here. Um, in fact, I have a set of mixins that I use all the time on every single project. I call them Scott's Dope Mixins. I have them on GitHub and check them out if you want. There's only like four or five mixins right now, but I use them on, on literally every project. So uh, I'm just so used to having those uh, and I could import that directly in here. Just, just toss it in the abstractions folder and it's going to be just used in my project.
Okay, so that's abstractions. Think of it as variables, your variables, abstractions are your mixins. Next, we have base. And base are the base components to your styling. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, it's the things that are, are set for uh, not like one-off things, but uh, you see we have forms.scss. So in here, you would style all of your inputs to look a certain way. Uh, if you have a universal theme, perhaps all of your mixins have a gray border that's one pixels we could say input um border solid one pix actually let's do two pixels and we can have this just be 666 and if we were to save this uh basically nothing crazy is going on here uh, we're not using any mix-ins whatever this is our normal styles so things that go into base and things that go into components are where you're writing your site's styles. And base styles just happens to be the stuff that is base. You know, your base fonts, uh, your base uh, typography stuff, so your H1, your header styles, um, your table styles, your media styles. You can see in media, they automatically have a max width of 100%. Uh, that's so you have responsive images. Uh, all of your lists, perhaps, maybe, unless otherwise specified you want all of your lists to be um list style none i mean maybe just by you know you don't want that list style to be be there by default so uh this is base and keep in mind like with any of these other ones you can add on to here right you don't just have to use form list media tables typography you could have uh pretty much anything like maybe you had a lot of video on your site and you wanted a base style for those video containers and stuff like that. So that's base. And you can see by the order of things, variables are not outputting anything, abstractions aren't outputting anything, but base, base is most likely to use variables and abstractions and is going to be output general, just general styles. And in addition, you could create folders in here if you wanted an additional level of separation, or you could just have one file that's base.scss and contains all of your base styles if you don't want it to be that separated out. Um, the best thing is, is that really, uh, this globbing and everything, it really allows for a ton of flexibility without a ton of configuration. I don't have to change this statement, and I can change anything in this folder, and it's still going to work. So lastly, we have components. And components uh, is where most of your styles are going to go. Well, maybe not most because you have base, but base and components are where most of your styles are going to go. And in components uh, is Drupal sort of specific stuff or just the components of your site. You can see in this example, they have navigation and search. Uh, so you'd want to style the search uh, search box and search section of your site in here, uh, your navigation uh, you'd want to style in here. But if you wanted to break that down even more, you could create a new folder and you could call this menus. And inside of menus, you could put new file and save as main, uh, main hyphen, or just let's do main nav.scss. And in here, you could style your main navigation and then you could have secondary nav, whatever. And that way, instead of breaking up your CSS into commented sections like you've seen a long CSS file with comments separating every single section, what we're physically doing here is separating those sections into files. That way it's super easy to find anything you're looking for. Now, uh, if you're using Sublime Text 2, let's say we're over here editing the colors, I could do Command T and just type main nav enter and it's going to take me directly to this main nav file which is only going to contain the styles to my main navigation and again like uh everything in this is so excellent because this all gets compiled down to one css file so the browser doesn't care you're not having to import a ton of stuff but it keeps everything separated now uh there's also uh in components it, you could have a folder of blocks and every single block could have a uh, partial with the name of that block describing it. Um, just some examples. Uh, you could have node specific uh, partials. So that's what we have in these folders. Now we also have this uh, hacks, which is where you'd put 
basically your hacks. In fact, uh, you know, the, these are sort of like hacky things that you don't want to be included with this, you know, the rest of your styles. And that's sort of something that you can choose to do or not to do. We have no query, which is a really excellent SAS uh, library that comes with breakpoint that allows you to say, hey, just render my styles without mix or without media queries at all. And what that does is basically it allows for older browsers like IE that don't see media queries to just get whatever the latest or the last styles on your project are. So if you are doing things mobile first and you have your mobile styles, your normal styles, and then your, your wide styles, the site is actually going to only see the the wild the wide styles that are overriding the normals which are overriding the mobile so you're going to get the normal experience without having it to be responsive and then you don't have to use things like respond.js which is like a javascript solution to make that sort of thing work now we're going to go over exactly how to get this working but you don't have to add anything additional to this file to have your or your no query uh, css file being compiled it just does it automatically now normalize is importing the normalize library and you can see it's importing it directly from the normalize gem along with our variables and a toolkit for border box. So these are our CSS files and of course we have our, our styles.scss which is our main file and um, if we look at ohm in a second you'll see exactly how they have their setup. So let's pull that up. I have the ohm theme that comes with the SAS here, or that comes with Omega 4. And as you can see, this is where I copied that typography mix in from. And so let's go through their folders, okay? So we have, first is the variable folders. They have their colors and variable. They've labeled them light blue, mid blue, dark blue, that sort of thing. And you can do that too. It also helps if you label them by like what the component actually is, link, header, that kind of thing, if, if that's how you're using the colors. However, this is totally valid too. Um, grid is where you're going to be defining your grid variables. Notice how they have things like vertical and horizontal spacing unit, their, their tab, tablet, des their tablet site width, their desktop site width. Um, and their grid variables. And here we have in legacy, you're saying, you know, whether whether you want legacy support for IE7 or not, or any of the IEs. And typography, base font size, baseline, height, size, fonts, and stuff like that. Uh, these are all super helpful um, when you're building out your styles. Now next we have abstractions. Uh, you can see where we got the typography one from. They also have some other uh, you know, mix-ins and stuff, if you want to check these out. These are all great, you know, you can make an arrow really easily and stuff like that. Now, in uh, base, they have their split up exactly how we were talking about, and um, and here they're styling their inputs and things like that, their media, their tables, they're setting up their font face declarations and typography. And now in components, this is where they have theirs really broken out. They have blocks, so navbar has a block, user menu has a block, um, comments has a block, fields, various fields have a block, or a, uh, a partial here, forms, so different types of forms, collapsible, field sets, search forms, menus, we have the, like, the breadcrumb menu, action links, and uh, all sorts of great stuff in here. So you can use this as a model for exactly how you want to do yours, or you can even break it out further than that and change it. And like we said before, only have like one file, have less files, have more files, whatever you want, whatever's comfortable for you. Or you could even go 100% uh, outside of how they have it set up here and just start typing all your styles in this styles.scss if that's what you're comfortable with. You could put all your variables at the top here and just get rid of all this stuff here. Get rid of these import statements. So it's totally up to you. It's one of the best things about it is it makes it flexible without enforcing anything. You can do whatever you want. So that's the SAS style and structure. In the next video, we're going to start talking about the grid system. And we're going to set up our grid and we're going to assign some things to our grid and show you how singularity works and start to explain that. So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments, leave a comment in the video or hit us up at Twitter at Level Up Tuts. We're on Facebook. We're all over the place. And keep in mind, Level Up Tuts is supported entirely through donations right now. Um, that might not be the same in the future. I mean, we're always going to have 
all free content. But uh, right now we're supported entirely through donations. So if you want to donate, there's a link in the footer of our website. We, we of course, appreciate it. If not, no big deal. We're still going to provide a ton of free tutorials all the time regardless. So as always, thanks for watching. This is Scott Tolinsky. Bye.